All right, so this is gonna be a controversial video. Um, you might be surprised that I'm not always the biggest fan of infinite returns. Now, I have good friends that have really built their business around this. I've done well with infinite returns. I think infinite returns are great in some situations, but there are some situations where I don't think it serves your interest best as an investor to have infinite returns. And if you don't know what an infinite return is, we're gonna jump into that. We're gonna get into just different scenarios and why I think uh, infinite returns may not necessarily be the best situation for you. So let's jump in. All right, so a quick little disclaimer. I'm not giving you any investment advice. These are just simply my opinions. I could be wrong. So do your own research, make your own opinions, and for you know, get your own professional advice. Okay, so how infinite returns really work? I'm gonna basically draw this out for you. So let's say you put 100K into a deal here. You've got 100K into a deal. My blue pen looks like it's a little tired here. Uh, your 100K over, let's say over five years, it becomes 200K or something, right? So now you've got 200K. So then you take this 200K now out of this, what you're able to do is you're able to say, I've got an additional 100K here. You're able to pull money out. And so this typically happens through some sort of value add type of uh, appreciation, either, you know, this is a forced appreciation. So you've got forced appreciation. And then uh, you also have market appreciation, right? So both of these are what allow uh, your uh, 100K to basically double to 200K. Now, what typically will happen is that you'll pull money out of here uh, because you now the value of the property is significantly increased, right? So the value has increased to the property, but there is money left in the deal. So of this deal, let's say, uh, you know, 100K becomes 200K. Now uh, you're able to pull, let's say, you know, typically depending on what the loan to value is, let's say some money has to stay in. So you get basically your 100K back. So your 100K is coming back here. So now you've got your original 100K back. So now you're playing with house money. Now the principle of this is awesome, right? So basically you invested 100K, you've got your 100K back. You're still cash flowing on something that you don't even have money in for, which is awesome, right? There's, that's like the best thing in the world, so why not? So what's wrong with this, Bronson? What's wrong? What's, and I say, well, there's nothing really wrong with it, right? But what you can do with this is you can reinvest this. This can go again into deal number two, uh, maybe deal number two refinances, you can put in deal number three. So that is awesome, right? So this is the idea of the same money chasing multiple deals. Now, the other thing I would say though, is that a, con you a consideration here, you have this 100K that you still have left in a deal. So you have 100K left in a deal, the original money has you've gotten back, but let's say it's just 100K is, is back in it. Maybe it's less, maybe it's more, whatever. What is this 100K that's left in deal one doing for you? And this is a uh, what, I, what we call return on invested equity, right? So return uh, on invested capital, return on invested capital. Okay, there we go. Or return on invested equity. So what is your return on your invested capital? Now, if you've already done a value add, so the value add really is what allows you to get this big pop, right? So you get this big pop, the, the value goes up significantly. So once you get that pop, you're not gonna see the type of returns uh, in the future that you've currently seen up to that point. What that means is you come into a deal and we we'll typically see um, a lot of value add type of deals like this, around a 15% return per year. Uh, that typically is about half uh, cash flow. So you, know, you get some cash flow with that. And then a half will be of just you know, general appreciation kind of from the forced appreciation from the value add. Well, once you've done the value add, you lose this. You don't necessarily, I need to get some new pens here. <laughs> um, but you lose this big pop. So maybe you're only getting seven or 8% per year. That wouldn't be uncommon in this type of thing. Um, so this really, it's, it's the money that's left in here. Would it be better just to sell? And I would say in a lot of situations, it could be better to sell. Now there's two perspectives really to look at, right? So I'm gonna just wipe this away here. There's really two perspectives that um, you can look at. Um, so we talk about return on invested equity. We say, you know, 100K is left over. So now as an operator, so we operate deals and we partner with operators. So as an operator, um, this 100K, it's easier to basically operate the same deal. Meaning if I don't have to cash people out of one deal and put them into another, that's easier for me. Uh, a transaction is a lot of work, it's a lot of work for everybody. It's a lot of work for investors as well. But basically it's easier if the money stays in. 
Now, as a investor, now again, your goals may not be to simply maximize return. I know that sounds silly. Why would people say, I don't want to maximize return? Well, some of us say, I have a great operator. I'd rather just stay with them. Uh, you know, I know people, my friend Ken McElroy has done multiple deals that he's, you know, basically infinite return. He's done multiple refinances over a 20 year period. But if you're really looking as an investor, if your goal really is, you know, the goal is, is it to maximize returns? Um, then, you know, you always have to ask this question, you know, where can I get the highest return for the equity that I have? So if I have hundred K in a deal, what is that 100K? Now you may say, well, that was house money anyway, that already got my money back. Well, you still have to look at, this is still equity in the deal. And if you sold this property, going back to the original example that we shared, you could potentially be getting 15% or higher in a new deal, right? So this is just that number we talk about, return on, uh, on invested capital. So it's just something to really look at when you look at future deals. So this is really how I handle this. When it comes to refinances, I do it as an investor. I really try to think um, a lot of times we have 1031 into other deals. We've done refinances. We return some of the money to investors. Uh, but we try to look at it and say, you know, as a passive investor, I love refinances. I love being able to pull money out. I love value add. But also after a value add, um, you know, is it, it doesn't make more sense to sell at that point and to move it into another deal. So another there are some other additional um, considerations too. If you have a transaction cost, sometimes you know you have a taxable event, which is true, absolutely true. You know, refinances are not taxable. Um, it is taxable when you uh, sell a deal. But if you know if you have enough depreciation, if you have enough um, ability to be able to uh, you know move your equity into another deal, and it could be uh, you know the same type, like a multifamily deal, it could be an ATM deal, it could be a car wash, or there's some other type of deal, deals that we do. So, so the question really comes down to, with your uh, money, how hard is it working for you, right? So it's great to have your money working one, two, or three times, but uh, it's also important to say, what sort of return do I have on the money that is left back in a deal? So that's my thought on infinite returns. I'd love to know what you think on this. Uh, if you really play this out, it is you know, easier as an operator to do infant returns because you keep it in a deal, you keep the same investors, you don't have a transaction, you just simply refinance and then you just keep refinancing, refinancing, refinancing. As an investor, um, you, know, you may not get the highest return from that capital, but your money is safe, you know where it is. Um, but I'd love to know from you, what are your thoughts on that? Would you completely agree with this? Would you completely disagree with this? I would love to know in the comments below. So I wanna share this quote with you. This is a fun one. This says, either make your money work for you or you will always have to work for your money from Marshall uh, Seibler. Um, I wanna share this video with you. We did, it's a panel. It's the 2023 Multifamily Outlook event. Uh, check it out up here. We had a few awesome guests there. Check that out. If you haven't joined our investment club, we're doing multifamily deals. We're also doing stuff in other spaces such as ATMs and car washes and the oil and gas space. So if you haven't joined, click the link below. Love to know your comments and look forward to seeing you on the next video.